Hi, I'm Professor Andrew Jones Cathcart. I'd like to welcome you to Intro to Ethics Online. I'll be your instructor for the semester. And in this mini lecture, I want to talk to you a little bit about what ethics is and to give you some pointers for how to succeed as an online student. Now, you may have noticed that this course is actually a course in philosophy. Philosophy comes from two Greek words, meaning love of wisdom. We could describe this in a slightly different way by saying that philosophers are those people who are looking for the right, and by right we might mean the most reasonable or logical way of analyzing the big questions that concern us as human beings. So what would those questions be? Well, in a philosophy course you might typically ask questions like the following. Is there a God? Do we have free will? What's reality? What is knowledge? How do we gain knowledge? What is beauty? What is right and wrong? We could extend this list. This is not exhaustive, but this gives us a general idea of what philosophers might typically ponder. Let's stop with this last question, what is right and wrong, because that's really what we're focused on in ethics. And I want to give you the following kind of scenario to get us started. Imagine that a car that you're driving is approaching a tunnel. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, appears a young child. The child is in front of the tunnel in such a way, and your car is traveling at such a rate of speed, that there's no possibility that you can actually stop and save the child and save yourself. You have to make a choice. You can either sacrifice yourself or you can sacrifice the child. So if you hit the child, you will save the passengers in the car, if there are any, and you certainly save yourself because you're the driver in this case, with minimal damage to the car. By contrast, you could choose to veer the car off to the side, thus hitting an embankment. It'll bounce off the wall. Uh, and it will destroy the car, it will kill you and everyone else in the car, but it will save the child. What do you do? This is a classic, and in this case, split-second moral decision. Now, to complicate the matter a little bit, let me uh, give you the following condition. Uh, there's such a thing as self-driving cars. Self-driving cars are sometimes called driverless cars because they require no person to actually operate them. In the photo to the left, we see a family that is sitting there. It looks like they're playing dominoes, and notice the driver of the car is engrossed in the game. He's totally unaware of what's going on on the road. A driverless car would allow one to do precisely this. Now imagine that you are a car programmer, and you're in charge of designing a car to perform in certain ways. You could design the car to drive on the right or the left, depending upon where the car would be operated. You could design it so that the car would never go through a yellow light, but would always slow down and stop. You could design the car so that it would never speed. Going back to the tunnel example, would you be comfortable programming a car so that any car in that one out of a million chance where a child comes out in the middle of nowhere in front of a tunnel, where the car would actually mow down the child and save the people inside the car? Or would you think it'd be more ethical to design a car so that the car would actually sacrifice the driver and the passengers inside the car rather than the car itself? This adds, of course, another layer of complexity here, because now you're dealing not with your own life, but with the lives of lots of people, not just the child. So ethics, as a branch of philosophy, derives from some Greek roots, ethos or ethos, meaning custom or habit, and ethikos, where we get character from. And so Ethicists are focused on the kinds of choices we make and how they influence the type of people, the kind of character we, we form, and how we respond in certain situations where we have to make a choice, like a choice in the case of the tunnel or in the case of designing a car in such a situation. Ethics tells us not how we do, in fact, behave, but how we should behave. 
or should not behave in certain circumstances. So in any ethical course or ethics course, you will focus on the following kinds of questions. Are objective values in the world or are there no objective values on which we can all agree? What ethical responsibilities do we have to one another? Do we have any responsibilities one to another? Do we have a responsibility to future generations? Does it matter what we do now if we poison the planet, if we, if we uh, put lots of carbon into the atmosphere, if we cut down redwood trees and no one's there, um, none of us are there to enjoy these these uh, negative consequences years from now, right? Do we, do we have a responsibility to people that don't presently exist but will exist in the future? Do animals have rights? Do we have a duty to act in a certain way towards them? Do the ends justify the means? Is an action moral because it's commanded by God? And how does technology like cloning or collecting private personal information online or genetic enhancement? How does any of this relate to questions of ethics? What is the relationship between law and morality? Now closely related to a lot of the questions that we'll look at in the course is another sub-branch of philosophy called political philosophy, which asks questions like, what is a just society? Do we want more or less government? Uh, should we have a system of rights? What rights should exist? For example, we might say definitely we want voting rights, but what about health care? Should that be a right? What's more important, welfare or freedom? Supposing we could make lots of people very happy and very safe, but we could only do that by taking away a certain degree of freedom. What should trump the other? Should freedom take precedence or should welfare? How do we define things like equality or fairness? Now, all of these questions are particularly difficult to find good answers to, as we'll see. And despite this, we still want to ask them because we're human beings. And for the short time that we're alive, we wonder, what's life all about? How should I actually behave? We also notice that these questions are not really answered by other subjects. So while we could turn to science to get data on things like climate change or to get data on how an abortion works, or we could look at um, a history book to see whether or not uh, slavery existed at a particular time in a particular culture, none of these sources actually give us an ethical argument or perspective on how we ought to behave or what we ought to believe about these things. They give us, if you will, facts and opinions. Ethics is supposed to give us values and how to think about them. Now, in point of fact, even though you've probably never taken an ethics course, looked at an ethics book, and so on, you and I make ethical assumptions all the time, whether it's a, a simple assumption that we're barely aware of uh, when we take a course or we buy a product or we vote for a person or we choose to have a child or we raise our children in, in a particular way. We're placing a certain value on certain things and we're making certain assumptions about what we think is right, what we think is good, what we think is meaningful. Broadly construed, when we think of politics, the decision to vote, or the decision not to vote, our beliefs about immigration, our beliefs about warfare and the, and, and the justness of warfare, our beliefs about taxation and whether taxes are fair or are really a good idea or a bad idea, whether they should be raised or lowered, these all betray different ethical outlooks. Now, in terms of this course, you will know already by now that this is entirely online, and that means that everything from submitting assignments to taking tests to contacting me will be done in an online environment. So whenever you have questions in the course, make sure that you avail yourself of contacting me by email or within the course. Second point is it's very easy, in my experience, for online students to fall behind in an online course. Uh, this is mainly because you're not constantly getting up and going to a physical place where you're 
you're there a couple times a week and you have face-to-face -face interactions with other people. So I would encourage you not to fall behind, to make sure that you realize that online courses require a fair amount of work and dedication. Yes, it gives you flexibility in terms of time, but you have to manage your time well. I'd also really encourage you that whenever you have questions about anything in the course, please contact me as soon as possible. Don't leave it till it's too late. Also, I would want you to look over the course, look over the syllabus, look over the discussion forums, look over the assignments, look over the due dates, so that you have some general idea of how the course is set up and what is expected of you. In particular, if you have any questions about the requirements in the syllabus or any other questions about the course, please email me. Now, this course has, to some degree, uh, a disadvantage. The disadvantage being, in a face-to-face -face class, it's relatively easy, in my experience, to develop a sense of community where we kind of know each other, we're talking, we're having discussions, and so on. In an online environment, we have to do a little extra work in order to replicate that in an online forum. And so, for that reason, I like students to introduce themselves, and I want all students to feel comfortable communicating with other people, which is why all of us should extend a sense of uh, an attitude of respect and kindness to everybody at all times. Last point I would just give you is have fun. This is one of the rare instances in uh, the life of a student in which you can really be free to work through many different ethical issues and to reflect on what it means to be a human being, which is the common theme in all philosophy courses. And with that being said, I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful world of ethics.